I'm back, and I have some troubling news. It has come to my attention that there is a relatively new wave of lazy chain reaction videos circulating social media. People are setting up short lines of bricks that fall forward like regular dominoes, then fall back in a faster wave because of how they're spaced. It's, it's the simplest, most view-grabbing chain reaction trick posted only by people who don't actually care about chain reaction art and only want viewers to keep mindlessly watching. Wait for it, or watch till the end, these videos typically say, unaware that there are hundreds of other videos on TikTok, Twitter, and YouTube that all basically do the same thing. So are you ready to become one of those brick-building, view-grabbing content creators yourself? Today we'll be talking about the brick double domino effect, or as it's known in the chain reaction community, literally just the double domino effect. Here's everything you need to know about building it straight from a domino builder. Let's start with the most basic version of this trick, as well as the most popular. Now look, you don't need bricks, you can pull this off using whatever rectangular prism shaped objects you have accessible to you. Now I'm actually a domino builder, so I'm gonna use actual dominoes. To get the double domino effect, the dominoes are spaced at the same distance as their height. Now regular dominoes shift when they fall, so the only way to really maintain their spacing is to hinge them, and scotch tape is the most common way to do this. And to really make it a tape hinge and not just tape, crease the tape on the domino before measuring it out and setting it on the table. If you do all that right, it should work. But there is a more reliable way to build this. If you tape two dominoes together at their longest edge and fold them over each other, you now have one domino that can fall and the other that has the spacing pre-measured for you. So it's one of the most convenient things in the world to just make a whole bunch of these and put them end to end. And that is the secret to the most recognized form of the double domino effect, at least within the chain reaction community. I've been doing this in my video since like 2012. But we can still go further. Like what about this second method makes it much more reliable than the first? And actually, it's not really a matter of the spacing, it's that I happen to use vertical dominoes for the first method and horizontal dominoes for the second. So then, what makes horizontal dominoes more reliable than vertical ones? We can kind of find the answers here in Stand Up Maths Analysis video. His perspective is much more mathematical than mine, and if you watch his video, you may know that, yeah, the dominoes don't fall all the way down because there's this distance, and then they do fall all the way down, and they have that geometry, okay. But let's take this a step further. The larger this distance is, the more likely the trick is to work. Now we're getting into more of a chain reaction perspective. This overhanging distance is, theoretically, the range that the domino needs to fall into in order for it to be triggered in the second wave. Typically, if you can space the dominoes out so that if the first wave falls towards the back end of this overhanging distance, the trick will work. Even if it's dangerously close to the front edge, it probably won't work. Spacing them by their height puts the dominoes safely in the middle back area of that distance. And look at the equation at the end of Stand Up Maths video. The overhanging distance gets bigger the wider the dominoes are. And since bricks are much wider compared to regular dominoes, this trick is much easier to pull off with bricks. So whenever you see a video of this trick on social media, know that those clever, deceiving content creators know that this is the easiest way to perform this trick, and the method that they can put the least time into building only for it to translate to the largest numbers of brainless views. So going back to the two domino examples, it's a similar comparison. By turning the dominoes horizontally, it's like making them wider in a way. The height to width ratio is much closer, giving horizontal dominoes a much larger overhanging distance than vertical dominoes. And the side of a horizontal domino actually has very similar dimensions to a standard brick, and also very similar dimensions to two vertical dominoes attached face to face, meaning horizontal is definitively more reliable than vertical. And now that we're some ways through the video, I'm going to start dropping the more technical stuff for you non-chain reaction viewers. When the second wave comes back, that's also just another common domino trick called the sauna mod, or when the dominoes are flat, the flat sauna mod. One of the easiest traps to fall into when you're building a sauna mod is spacing the dominoes too close together. Think about it like the double domino effect. Space your dominoes too far into this distance and they won't fall. Sauna mods by nature have to be built with the dominoes right at each other's ends. Put your sauna mods too close together and they won't work. Just want to point that out. Now, taking everything that we've learned about distances and sauna mods, we can combine that knowledge for one final trick. Adding outcroppings to the back of each domino will increase the overhanging distance at certain intervals, meaning that we can actually put multiple sauna mods in the same line, which means that you can have double sauna mods, or what I'm demonstrating here, the triple sauna mod. Hope you enjoyed this video. I know there's lots of footage and analysis on this trick already, but now that I'm making these analysis videos as like my new thing, I thought I'd get my perspective in as well. And now that this video is out, you all can go back to absolutely milking this trick on social media, okay? Have fun.